Good morning, good morning, good morning. Right. Happy Lord's Day and uh, glad to see all our happy faces this morning. So this morning, um, let me ask you this question. How many uh, choices you made this morning until right now? Did somebody count it? <laughs> because this morning we're going to talk about it's your choice. It's about choices. Now, according to some research, the uh, estimated decisions we make each day is around 226.7 uh, on food alone. <laughs> and that's, wow. Hmm. What I'm going to cook? Where am I going to eat? Okay. So for food alone, we made decisions 226.7 according to researchers at Cornell University. And the other figure, that's outstanding, estimated decisions we make each day, it's 35,000. Wow. Wow. Well, according to various internet sources and according to different organizations, it's 35,000 a day. Can you imagine that we are making that decisions a day? I thought I'm just making 10 decisions a day. <laughs> but on food alone, we're making 200 plus decisions. Now, because of free will, our life is made up of many thousands of choices every day. You know, from what to wear this morning, what makeup to put this morning, what color of uh, lipstick, what color of shoes I will wear. No. No, I'm not wearing any lipstick. <laughs> what color of shoes, what color of dress, you know, what will I use? Will I use my hair gel or will I use the other one? You know, um, when we go to uh, the stores, we choose from so many different brands of shampoos. What shampoos would I would use? What cologne will I would wear? What uh, toothpaste will I would use? No, will I buy? And um, when you're about to make your payment in the checkout counter, which lane will I go to? This lane or that lane? And sometimes when we choose the, uh, we thought the fastest lane, we are in the slowest lane. <laughs> and that's what they call the Murphy's Law. <laughs> and, uh, oh, right, um, just at the corner, the uh, election, election day. Who to vote for? I saw in the house of my sister, there's a, uh, uh, from, I think from the election, what do you call this? We call it COMELEC, from the Commission on Election. You know, from the voting, you know, uh, there's paper there, um, you will cast your vote. And there are those things that what to believe. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we are making so many choices every day. And uh, when we are making decisions, especially those that will have an impact on our lives, we base them on the values that we hold. Are you aware of that? We make choices, especially those that are so important in our life, in our lives. We base it from what we value, <clears throat> what we hold on. <clears throat> Surprisingly, you know, many are not aware of this process and that their decisions are based on their core values. Okay? Now, it is called the uh, values-based decision making. So it is an approach that involves considering the core values that a person or that are most important to a person. Okay. So we base our values on that things. Uh, another question, what are values? Now, values are the fundamental beliefs that govern our lives. Values, the things that a person believes are important 
in the way he lives. Values, the important beliefs and principles a person holds. So, values are therefore our beliefs. These are standards with which we measure our life. Values are the things that matter to us. And the values, it helps us determine our way of living. So that is why it is important when we make decisions, we must be very, very careful. Okay. So, however, before we can make any value-based decisions, any decisions for that matter, information is necessary. Do you agree? Before you can make any decisions, you need to have data. You need to have information available to you before you can make a uh, logical, as they say, coherent uh, decision. It is very much impossible to decide on things without any information available to you. For example, let, let us try. Let us try. Yes or no? Who will say yes? Raise your hand. And who will say no? <laughs> now, my question is, on what basis you are saying yes? On what basis am I saying no? Because there are no informations at hand. All right? So we cannot make any uh, intelligent decisions without any informations at hand. Okay? Like yes or no. Now, there is what is called information-based decision making. Now, these are information made available to you <clears throat> that you can use to support your decision. Now, based on that, with given informations, with given data, we can now answer yes or no. Okay? But without any information, it is hard to say yes, it is hard to say no. Okay? Now, with the information available, we can start the process of our decision making. Now, in the process, will now come uh, values decision making. With the information-based decision, now comes the value-based decision making. The final output of your decision. The final output, final output of your decision is actually the product of your values. Remember, we said a while ago that we base our decisions on values. So your decision is the byproduct of your values based on relative information available to you. Your decisions reveal who you are and your decisions will reveal what you value the most. And sometimes they say, you are what you decide. Okay. Now the beauty of our creation, you and I, that we we are all created by God with free will. That's the beauty of our creation. Now what that means is we can decide for ourselves and choose what we want to do. But in the process of your decision, of our decision making, there are only just two results in the end. It is blessing at one end and there is a consequence at one end. But of course, when I say consequence, I mean it in the negative tone. Because consequence can be either negative or positive. But when I use the word consequence, I mean it in the negative tone. Okay? The unpleasant result. Now, and this is the most important thing to remember in making your decisions. You have no one to blame but yourself. Correct? You cannot blame Brother Joe. You cannot blame any other individuals for the decision or for the consequences of your decisions. It's your choice. It is your choice. Now, people will just try to influence you on what decisions to go or to make. And those are part of the information. 
when they try to lure you to make certain decisions, those are part of the informations that you have at hand. But you cannot blame them if you choose with a negative result. Okay? We are responsible for our actions, and God is clear about that. For each one shall bear his own load. Galatians chapter 6, verse 5. Now, the word load here is different from Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Wherein, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, we are told to bear each other's burden. To bear each other's load. Galatians 6, 5, the word load or burden is different from Galatians chapter 6, 2. Because Galatians chapter 6, verse 5, it means you are responsible for whatever consequence of your own action. No finger pointing. Okay. When you put your when you point your finger to somebody, your one finger, you are pointing three fingers to you. So you are responsible for your own actions. Okay. Now the word choice, okay, the very word choice, it assumes at least two options. Okay? When you hear the word choice, you have two options right there. And it assumes one is better than the other. Okay. But sometimes, the results of our choices won't have a dramatic impact on our life. There are instances when you choose something, there's really no impact. For example, choosing what to snack, to snack on between almond nuts or a pecan nuts. Okay. Whether, what, whatever you choose, it has no really impact on your life. It has no impact on your spiritual life. Right? But there are choices that will have a dramatic impact in your life. And that's what we are talking this morning. And we will be uh, talking this morning. Like this morning, when I was looking at my shoes, I was thinking, what shoes will I wear? Will I choose the black one or will I choose the blue one? It has no, really no impact at all with my spiritual life. But you have to choose. Okay? There are choices that you have to make, whether it's small or whether it's big. But there are, again, there are those that have a big impact and there are those who have little or no impact at all. Okay? Some are, uh, will have a big impact in your children's life. For example, what school, what university will they go to? Okay. Because it will shape their future. Okay. Now, going back uh, from the beginning in the temptation of uh, Adam and Eve, okay, in, in the garden by the serpent, is a classic story okay? and one that is forever etched in the minds of the people okay? even to the coming generations genesis chapter 3 <clears throat> we can read the account of <clears throat> the uh, uh, temptation okay? now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the lord god had made he said to the woman did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat <clears throat> fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say, you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. <coughs> so there was a command by God, and there was an option for them. Now, in verses 4 and 6, it says, you will not certainly die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and now, Eve knew the command of God. 
not to eat nor touch a particular fruit in the garden. God gave them the information as to why they should not eat nor touch this particular fruit. Okay? Now, here comes the devil. The devil also gave his information regarding the fruit. Okay? Information as to why that Eve could eat of the forbidden fruit by God. Now, Eve has all the information within her. And she had a choice whether to follow God or to follow the devil. A choice to obey God and please God or a choice to obey her own desire and please her own lust for the fruit. But unfortunately, she chose to please her lust. Okay. Now, of course, in the event, Adam also. So the consequence, what was the consequence? They were cursed by God and banished from the Garden of Eden forever. So they have a choice. In Luke chapter 22, then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. Now they were delighted and agreed to give him money. Now we go to Matthew 26, the same account, but it detailed how much. Okay. Then one of the twelve <clears throat> called Judas went to the chief priest and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? So they counted out for him 30 pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Now, Judas betrayed Jesus because Satan entered him. Now, according to, to Barnes' commentary, the meaning of the word Satan entered Judas. It says, <clears throat> it is not necessary to suppose that Satan entered personally into the body of Judas, but only that he brought him under his influence. He filled his mind with an evil passion and led him to betray his master. Now, this commentary is actually consistent with that of how James described the birth of sin in James chapter 1, 14 and 15. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desires he is lured away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. Now Judas had a choice. He had a choice to remain faithful to Jesus, but because of his desire for wealth, he chose to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Now, what's the consequence? Because of so much guilt building up inside Judas, he took his own life. In matters of spirituality, my dear brethren and friends, if one believes that there is God, it demands, therefore, a great deal of thinking because the effect of the decision is for all eternity. Again, many people believe that there is God. But so many people does not want to come to God. They just believe in God, but they don't want to obey God. It's a decision that will have an impact for all eternity. God made it clear that there are just two choices to choose from. See, I said before you today, life and prosperity, death and destruction. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads <clears throat> to life, and only if you find it. Now, with the choices before you and I, 
The Bible's principle has always been to choose life over death. God over Satan. Between the wide and between the narrow gate. Now Jesus opens up and tells us to choose the narrow gate. In his first statement, Jesus said, enter. Enter through the narrow gate. He immediately points us to where we should go. And then he gives us the choices. But before he gives the choices, he tells us immediately, this is the way that you should go. <clears throat> Enter through the narrow gate. Now Moses, also talking to the Israelites, exhorted them to choose life, to choose God. This day, I call the heavens and the earth <clears throat> as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now, choose life, according to Moses, so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him for the Lord is your life. He gave his case on why we should choose life and blessings over death and curse. Now, if we go to, to the uh, early verses of Deuteronomy chapter 30, 17 and 18, but if your heart turns away and you are not disobedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare you this day, you will certainly be destroyed. Before Moses gave them the options, he gave them the informations why they need to choose life, why they need to choose God over the other idols. Because I declare you to this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. Now, my dear brothers, sisters, and those who will were watching us in Zoom and who will watch us in the YouTube, thanks to Brother Rex, we are in the YouTube, in the uh, social media. Now, think about this for a moment. Think about this. Is God obligated to save us? Let us contemplate on that question for just a few seconds. Is God obligated to save me? Is God the Father obligated to send His only Son to die on the cross to suffer a cruel death to save me and give me a place or a piece of heaven? Now, if your answer is He's not obligated, then you are right. I agree with you. I agree with you. He could have chosen not to sacrifice his own son. He could have chosen that. And let us just get, let us just go to hell. But no. Are you ready for the good news? Are you ready for the good news? Mm -hmm. Now because of God's great love for us, God chose, He chose to save us. Now, I want everybody to read this verse. For God chose not only Brother Joe. <laughs> now let us read everybody. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out His anger on us. For God appointed us. Appoint. For God chose us. For God chose rather to save you and I. Amen. Amen. I was so happy because God chose to save me. And God chose to save you also. 
That's why Paul said, I am the worst sinner of all. But God chose to save him as well. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out his anger on us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that a great news? That's a great news. God is not obligated by whatsoever means to send his son to die on the cross for you and I. But because he loved us so much, he chose to save us by giving his son on the cross. Isn't that wonderful and isn't that great? I should rejoice because God chose to save me. And I am rejoicing and I am forever grateful to God. Now I want all of us and to those in our Zoom, to those who would watch us, I want you to read this verse again and again and again and listen to its message that God chose to save you. That God chose to save me, a sinner, through his son Jesus Christ. Powerful, isn't it? Powerful. If you will just listen, it is only powerful when you are listening to the voice of God. Its power will have no effect if you will not heed to the voice of God. If you will not listen to Him. If you will not give your life to Him. Those things are useless to you. But for us who have given our life to God, that's a powerful message. But again, but why? <laughs> but why? Why would God care so much for me? A mere creation, just like what David asked before. You know, just like David, when he was looking at the, the beauty of God's creation, probably uh, at this balcony, looking at all the stars and everything God created, and God what has, what has done in his life, he asked the same question. What is man that you are mindful of him and human beings that you care for them? Lord, what have I done to deserve you? I am just your creation. The answer is love. God loves you. Saranghe, te amo. Waini, Itzele Beach, Aliwe, Mahal Kita, Asitere you. So I love you. That's the reason why God sent His Son to die on the cross. Because that is one of God's attributes. He is love. Now here's another thought. <clears throat> here's another thought. Have you ever wondered why, despite of our many choices in life, God continues to bless us and to deliver us. Have you ever thought about that? Despite me not serving God, He continued to bless me. He continued to give me my life every day. He continues to deliver me. He continues to heal me, heal my family, even though I do not love God. Have you ever wondered why? Now, even up to this moment, when many have not truly embraced God and done His will, He continues to bless them. The blessing of life itself every day that you and I have. Why? In Joshua chapter 24, if you will read Joshua chapter 24, from the beginning verse, Joshua recounts the, the back and forth relationship between the nation of Israel and God. The nation of Israel, they will fall out of love, they will worship the idols, then eventually they will be conquered, and God will rescue them, love them back, or love them, and then again afterwards, they will serve God. Then afterwards, they will fall back again, fall out of love, and they will again worship idols, 
and they will fall again and they will be defeated and God will rescue them and then they will serve God again for a meantime for a short time and they will fall back again and over and over again okay that has been their story okay? but still God continued to prosper them okay then finally Joshua gave his famous speech now fear the Lord Joshua said finally fear the Lord serve him with all faithfulness throw away the gods and serve the Lord but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you then choose Joshua said choose for you this day for yourself this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are dwelling you are living but as for me and my household we will serve the Lord now generally why God still bless us and delivers us is because of God's love. We know that already because of God's, you know, His magnitude of love towards us. Again, we know that already. But let us ask ourselves, why am I still blessed by God with my life even though I am not obedient to His commands? The answer is patience. 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 Patience is another attribute of God. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. You see, God is giving us time to come to our senses, to come back to our senses and see His love for you and I. Time for you and I to see God's goodness in our lives that despite our stubbornness he continues to heal us when we are sick despite of our stubbornness he continues to 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 give us whatever we want when we are in need despite pursuing other things about god pursuing other things more than god god continues to provide us with food on the table even though god is constant uh, not constantly in our lips and in our mind and in our hearts he continues to protect us every day why patience patience god is hoping he is hoping by being patient with you and i you see we might try to even you know take a glance at him and see how beautiful god is come and taste god According to the Bible, see, that somehow he is patient with us, hoping that somehow we can take a notice of him. Just like a man to a woman trying to get her attention. God is trying to get her attention. Somehow in our lifetime, we might take a chance, a glance at him. And we might come to realize that we, what we are doing are wrong, that we need God. It is no surprise that the first mentioned by product of love is patience. According to the book of love in 1 Corinthians, particularly verse 4, love is what? Number one, love is patient. See? Patience or patience in Greek, it means long-tempered, long-tempered. God is not short-tempered. He is long-tempered. Because of his long-tempered, he doesn't want us to perish. He wants us to come into repentance, for God does not take pleasure in the death of the wicked. Rather, that we would turn from his evil ways and live eternally. Okay? in heaven according to Ezekiel but here is a fair a fair warning to everybody remember that everything will have its end everything will come to an end even God's patience and after that God will exhibit his next attribute and that is justice justicia justice pravda the justice of God. It is the ultimate, okay, the ultimate outcome of our choice here on earth 
is the justice of God? Will it be eternal life or eternal death? We must not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man saw or a man reaps what he saws. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. What we cannot mock is the justice of God. You cannot just laugh at God and say, oh, I can get away with it. No. The Bible is clear. We cannot mock the justice of God. Sooner or later, my dear brethren and friends, our life will meet its end. Now, if you will ask me, if you will ask me what I like about life, what I like about life, my dear brethren and friends, life is unpredictable. And that is what I like about life. Now, you, boy, you might be wondering, what do I mean by that? Brother Mike, what, what do you mean that you love, you love life because of its unpredictability? Now, the reason for that is because it makes me aware of my need for God every day. Because life is so unpredictable, I do not know when my life will come to an end. So it makes me aware of my need for God every moment of my life. That a choice, a choice that I need to pursue God every, above anything else. Every day, every moment of my life, I need to choose God because life is unpredictable. Do you get the point? That's why, and that's what I love about life. It's unpredictability. Now, brethren and friends, be sure you are making the right choices. And your choices now, okay, your choices now, or are your choices now leading you to heaven when your life ends? Or are your choices now leading you to other place? Now, if not, come forward and take a crucial step in your journey with God. We want you to talk to us. If you're having difficulties in life, come to us, talk to us, and we will show you the way towards Jesus and his salvation. We should take the hand. You should take the hand of Jesus, the hand of the conciliation offered by Jesus Christ, and we need to truly repent of our sins. You need to truly repent of your sins. You need to be immersed into Jesus Christ and wash away your sins. So my dear brethren, I will leave you with this final verse from the Bible, Hebrews 12, 25. Be careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one who is speaking. For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the earthly messenger, we will certainly not escape if we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven. Good morning. Shall we all stand up as we sing the song of invitation?